Well, good morning. I thought I'd try to do, as I mentioned in a Facebook post the other day, a very quick impromptu uh, video on wall thickness as opposed to something being made a solid. So as some of you may have seen another video that I, I did, it's in my listing somewhere. You want to give an object like I have here. So this is a 1967 Grand Prix door file that I completed a little bit ago. And obviously something like this will not survive printing. It, it's too thin. There's just no way. So we're going to add, we need to add wall thickness to this so that when it's in the slicer and it prints, it'll come out looking reasonable and not a, not a wrinkled up mess or nothing at all or a mess in the bottom of your vat. So as I showed before, we always want to go into uh, edit mode here, like I'm showing. Highlight everything, and I like to get, it's not necessary, I have to get rid of all these triangles, so we hit the Alt and the J key to get rid of all the, um, uh, turn everything to quads. And you can either put this on the Y-axis view, orthographic, or you can go slightly off in perspective view like this. Hit your E key. In my case here, since I want to go straight, straight out, I hit the X key. And you can type in the value. And since I want to go inwards towards the Y plane, so I'm going to hit minus uh, 1.8. That's our wall thickness. You can type that in or you can take your cursor and drag it out. Now, I can't leave that like this because that's asking for trouble. What I have to do now is to highlight everything, hit the shift and the N key and it recalculates everything your faces to normals to face in the outside so that way when it goes in the slicer <clears throat> it will not be turning up as just uh, all black um all black object or black on the one side and black and, and, and blue on the other that is wall thickness if i were to take a a measuring thing and to measure this out it would come out to pretty much exactly 1.8 millimeters so let's take our measuring thing here I drag this out. That's about right. It's not going to be exact because I don't have an exact point, but the, the little slider the measuring thing is telling me I'm getting about 1. Uh, 1.8 millimeters. For me, anywhere between 1.5 and 2 millimeters is ideal for printing. Some go smaller than that. I'm a little bit paranoid when it comes to roof sections, rockers, things like that, because I've had issues with things smaller than not at least 1.5 millimeters. You don't get that wrinkling and just other sorts of issues that can come from a print being too thin. Okay, let's go back to, to um, object mode. And in the background hidden here, I have the Grand Prix taillights. And let's see, let's swing this around. I believe that's right about here. There we go. Okay, now there's no way you can actually give this object any kind of wall thickness. The way the file was uh, made is the designer took the, uh, he put a plane in between the two lenses and stacked them up here. And, and, and one thing about designers, I've had this conversation with people back and forth. Most designers do not 3D print, okay? They don't follow the principles needed. Now, not all of them, a few do. But most designers design a file for visuals and visuals only. They don't concern themselves with, okay, is this part going to mesh? Is that? They don't do that. They do it basically for visuals. So when this file was created, when when, when Eric from uh, EDM uh, Garage, EDM 3D Garage, made this file, this was all colored and prettied up and so forth. But as an actual 3D file to print, obviously we're going to have to make this some sort of solid. So what I want to do here is put this in edit mode. When I hit the P key, go down here to loose parts, and I want to separate, go back to object mode, and uh, I want to separate these things out. And just for demonstration purposes here, what I did to my own file is this plane here, tied these here for a second, this plane here became its own object. And I had to, I think what I did is I split this up into two, which can be done by highlighting these vertices here, for example. I think I highlighted these. Oh, let me get rid of this uh, measuring thing here. We don't need that anymore. We need this. You could highlight these here. 
cancel those out and you have a plane for your upper the Grand Prix has two lenses your upper and your lower and just for this purpose here we want to just have the um, uh, upper one for demonstration I want to show here so I need to have this particularly particular part boxed in there's no way I can give that wall thickness and still have that lens or, or have that that assembly intact. So the best thing I found to do, and, and I'm not going to do it here, but of course you want to tuck your sides in and so forth. We have to tuck in and let's slide the vertices here and let's slide those in. Kind of tidy things up that it is still inside the object, but obviously not hanging below the other object. In other words, this plane needs to be inside this entire housing here okay so in order to box this in we want to take the the will be the chrome bezel for the lens put it in edit mode there's a lot of vertical well not too many he, he tightened things up toward the end here but this should be pretty simple what i mean by boxing things in let's get rid of these triangles here you want to grab two of your outmost vertices, which in this case would be right there and here, here, and here. Hit the F key to fill those in. Now we want to grab those two outmost, uppermost vertices here on the outside of the uh, very perimeter of the object. Hit our F key continuously or hold it down. And we now want to box this in. You hear my cat meow in the background. Every time I start speaking, he thinks I'm talking to him. I got three of them. It's always the one that's always a noisy one. <laughs> so hit our F key or hold it down continuously. That is now a solid. That is considered a solid part because the whole entire object has been closed in. We still have our indentation here to, to represent what would be the lens. Of course, we would need to tuck this in, this bottom edge here down in inside this, this uh, chrome piece a little bit. But that is a solid. It's, like I said, there's no way you can give that wall thickness. You could, but then you got to find a way to close in your, your mesh and your, and your, and your, uh, and your chrome uh, bezel here. And now you run the risk of having double walls. It won't print correctly because you got walls against walls and trapped resin and all kinds of uh, strange things going on. So... In a nutshell, that's the difference there between giving a part wall thickness like our door here in the distance, as opposed to boxing an object in so that it will print. And that can be the case whether it's a water hose, tires, uh, certain body parts like, like trim, uh, chrome trim. Sometimes you, you just can't give them wall thickness. Sometimes you can extrude them depending on the shape. And there's other times you have to just simply take the vertices and close them in so that mesh will be a closed object, which represents a solid, so you don't lose a part during printing. Okay, that's pretty much it. I'm going to make this real quick. I got a 10 minute limit here on this free version of Bandicam here. So hopefully that, that kind of explains things. And um, a little word about myself. I, I don't like, I hate trying to explain techniques in little tiny text box on Facebook. I just... I can't stand it. it drives me crazy it's much easier for me and better for me to try to explain this in spoken word and by video of exactly what time i get people dms asking well how do i do i say look you, you got to check out my videos to try to explain that here in a little tiny annoying text box for me is a no-go okay so hopefully this clears things up and um i may come back a little tip or two later on depending on how things go take care